Let's review Psachim Nachman Malaf. The Gemara discusses the halachas of eating the carbon Pesach. We know it cannot be eaten cooked. The Torah says water. However, what if it's cooked in other juices? The Gemara tells us that that would also be usher. Either we know it from a Kavah Choymer, or we learn it, according to Rebbe, from Boshol Mavushol, which tells us no matter how it's cooked, even in its own juices. The Rabbanon learn it from a Kavah Choymer, not from Boshol Mavushol, so they would allow it to be cooked in its own juices. However, they use it with to tell us that if you roasted the carbon Pesach properly, and then afterwards you cooked it, it would still be usher to be eaten. Then the Gemara discusses other ways to prepare the carbon Pesach that are not no, not mavushal, but yet not sliesh. Three examples the Gemara gives are either if it's cooked bechamit tferia, or if it's overdone, it's burnt, or it's completely raw at all, completely raw, not cooked at all. Those three cases the Gemara says would be included in the prohibition of kiyim sliesh if it's not. Created properly, there's also a love. Now, whether or not you get Malchus for that would be told in the Machlik Zabai and Rava if you get Malchus and a love Shabbat Rava holds you do. And Rava says not only do you get Malchus for eating it raw because it says Kim Sliesh, but you'd get two Malchus if you ate it no or Bashal Mavushal because there's a love specifically for them, plus you also get a second Malchus for the Kim Sliesh. A bai who says you don't get malchus for lav shabachlolis, the Gemur has a shaila. Either it means you don't get malchus at all, which means if you ate it cooked in chamet feria, you wouldn't get malchus. There was another shot where a bai says you do get malchus for that. What we mean that you don't get malchus for the lav shabachlolis is if there's another lav that specifically includes the issue that you're doing. For instance, you ate it cooked, then you only get one malchus for eating it cooked and not a second malchus for the lav shabachlolis of kim sliesh. The Gemara says this same achlex of Abai and Rava, but eating the carbon Pesach also applies to another eating different wine products. Because the Pesach says, Mikol Asher Ye Asa Migefen Hayayin, which is a lav Shabachlolis, including all wine products. And then the Pesach specifies, Mecharetzan and Vadzag Lo Yoichel. So the same Shaila that applies to Pesachim would apply to the another eating. Either Chetzanim, if he gets two Malkis, according to Rava, according to Abaye, he'd only get one. Or if he had other wine products, it'd be a Shailon Abaye, if he gets Malkis for it, or not. Then the Gemara discusses uh, Halacha, that if you join a Chabura, you're only allowed to eat with your Chabura, not with another Chabura. Now, even if there's two Chaburas eating from the same Korban Pesach, you're only allowed to eat the Korban Pesach in the Chabura that you joined. So what happens if on Erev Pesach, you eat some of the Korban Pesach? That does not disqualify you from joining your Chabura, because when you ate it, it was not the time of Achila. But if, at, after night time, you ate a Kazayis of the Korban Pesach, you're now disqualified from joining your Chabura, because you're not allowed to eat it in two Chaburas. Then the Gemara tells us that the Isser, to eat it cooked, is only during the time where there's a Mitzvah to eat it sli. So, if you ate the Korban Pesach cooked before Pesach, there would not be a lav. The lav is kiyim tzliyesh. At the time where you're supposed to eat the carbon Pesach tzliyesh, then al toichlu mimenu no uvashim avushol, that's when there will be a lav. The Gemara also says, it doesn't matter when you cooked the carbon Pesach, even if you cooked it before Pesach and not on Pesach, you're still not allowed to eat that cooked carbon Pesach, uh, Pesach by night, because we learned it from uvashim avushol mikal makim. The Gemara asks, how could Rebbe know two things from Avosh and Avosh? A, what we mentioned is that all juices are prohibited to cook in, and B, even if you cooked it Erev Pesach. So the Gemara says Avosh and Avosh really includes two extras. A, there's a double Lushen, and B is the double Lushen changes, because it could have said Avosh and Avosh, or Mavosh and Mavosh. Since even in the double Lushen, it switches from Avosh to Mavosh, that allows us to have an extra limut. So at the end of the day, we know both, no matter what it's cooked in, it's also and B is if it's cooked on Erev Pesach, it's also Osir. Then the Gemara says, the halach is, you're supposed to eat the carbon Pesach, Pesach by night, not Erev Pesach in the afternoon. Well, what if you ate it Pesach, Erev Pesach in the afternoon? Would you get Malchus? So the Gemara brings it tzad to say that you would get Malchus. But the problem is, the way we know that you're supposed to eat the carbon Pesach by night is it says, V'achlu es abosr, ba'layla zeh, and we make a dik, ba'layla in, b'yoyim loy, we should alaf abo mechlala say. We normally understand that you don't get Malchus for a lav haba mechlala say. So the Gemara says that this b'risa that says you get Malchus for eating the carbon Pesach on Erev Pesach is following the sheet of Rabbi Huda, who holds you do get Malchus for a lav haba mechlala say. 
And the way you know it is because it says at the beginning of the Pasha, by Yidabar Hashem al Moshe, lay more. And there's two different ways to dash and lay more. Either lav nemar bidvar melu, meaning all of the following items that we learn out are usher, because of a lav ablam chalasei, you should know there's a lav that applies to them as well. So that's how you know you get malchus, or it could be loy lav emor. It means Hashem's instructing Moshe, tell Kla Yisrael that these things aren't just usher, they're also a lav. And therefore you would get malchus, according to Rabbi Huda, for eating the carbon Pesach on the Arab Pesach.